When I was in university first year, I had a friend. When we first moved into his, you know, to our flats, he was the one downstairs, I was upstairs. He had a Hoover that didn't work. And every single day, he'd walk into reception at our student company and say, can we get a new Hoover? They sent him a new Hoover. Brand new in the box. And it's one of the industrial ones that can Hoover up fucking anything. And I know this because we spent a good half an hour hoovering up carrier bags. You see a carrier bag, we went to that and just hoover it. And then we did with a bin line. <laughs> you got the hoover while it was on. Woo! Do 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 do. I don't know why he did it. Put it into a pine glass full of water. <laughs> and he just sucked up all the water. And he just went do 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 do. No! <laughs> and immediately the hoover just started smoking. We'd had it for less than half an hour. We just saw him out of his window because he was on the first floor, just dragging this Hoover back across the courtyard to reception and just saying, I don't know what's wrong with it. I remember talked about how I watched a friend of mine play Oblivion back in the day when he became a vampire and he got really, really into it and he started cosplaying as a vampire in the game. And he made his character wear like the necromancer's robes and a hood. And all he would do is he'd find one victim for the day and would jump from rooftop to rooftop. And every jump he'd go <laughs> as he chased them. And then he'd like he'd just go into the house, steal that person's blood, and then punch them to death and run out of town while just going, <laughs> just jumping from side to side. But the detail he did is he went into third person mode. So you see like the bad oblivion third person jump. And he timed his jump. So that the instant his toe touched the floor, the jump started again. So it does look like the cat's like, tur, 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 tur. <laughs> Just while going. The best shutdown I've ever seen is when I was out with um, a friend of mine. And they were just like, we were in a shop. And he just went up, so I just go into the till, as you do. So he yeah. walked to the till. And just this old man behind him, it's like tats on the shoulder. Can we go in front? He went, no, I'm buying one thing. I'm like, buying like a Mars bar or some shit. He's like, it's fine. And this old man just got so mad. Like he was so angry, like the dis like how dare this young man turn his back on me and started like giving it the big I am to his wife like, oh, back in my day. Lads like him, they get the shit kicked out of him. He comes in my pub and my mate just turned around and went, shut up, you'll be dead soon. And then turned back around and paid for his thing and walked out. Oh, oh my, my God. I, I, was, I couldn't believe it. He just like, he, because you could hear this old man just yelling at him and he like under his breath. He's not going to turn around and pick a fight with an old man, and this old man knew that. Oh he knew that he could call him every name on the sun, make every threat imaginable. And uh, so he turned like, shut up, you'll be dead soon. And just walked out of the shot like an <laughs> absolute amazing. fucking boss. Right, when I went to university, the first time I was a young man, 18 years of age, I get to university and I get to my, my halls of residence for the first time. I'm invited to a house party. I know a few people there. And a friend that I met a couple of months ago is there, and all his housemates are there. And he comes in, and he's got a girl with him. And immediately, all of the people in the party, we all look at each other, we shout, because this girl looks young. It's like, we were all young, we were all 18, but she looked young. It's like, to the point where you could see the hook on her back and the piece of wire leading all the way to jail. And we go to our friends, like, where the fuck did you meet her? He goes, oh, um, uh, it's, a, it's a concert, a gig. How old is she? She's 18. She was drinking when she was there and she's got braces. <laughs> that was our first clue. He goes, no, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. So we, we've, we forget all about it, we enjoy the part. We, we rib him a bit, but it's like, fine, it's fine, it's fine. They end up sleeping together. He woke up in the morning, as you do, he's hung over his foot. He's like, he's with the girl. Oh, it's pretty late. Do you need to like go anywhere? Do you need to go to like, college or anything? She said she was at college. Goes, oh no, I don't need to go to college. Goes, oh, you've got a day off. No, it's because I'm not in college. What do you mean you're not in college? Oh, I'm in school. And then he finds out she's 16. Legal in the UK. Yeah, yeah, we should probably find out. <laughs> 16 is the legal age of consent in the UK. So and he's 18 and he met her at a gig and she was drinking there. So he, he wants to know, he was like, but she's still at school. And this is where the story, right, he goes, what do you mean you're at school? She goes, oh yeah. Um, I can't really miss a day, because if my parents find out, they'll want to know where I was. Uh, okay, so <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Can you ring the school for me and pretend to be my dad? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> he, was, he was inside this girl no more than four hours ago. Oh, I guess I could do that. What does your dad like? He's Scottish. <laughs> 
<laughs> my friend can't do accents to save his life. What do you mean he's fucking Scottish? He's Scottish, so you have to ring up. We can't put a Scottish accent on, so he knocks on his housemate's door, who he met the day before. Can you do a Scottish accent? And he comes out and he puts on the broadest fucking Scot. I can't do one. Of course I can do one. And he, he goes, what do you need me to do? You need to call up a school. A school? Oh, we're going to talk about this later, mate. Call up a school. Say she's not going to be in. So he calls me and he puts on the broadest fucking Scottish accent you've ever heard. He is milking the shit out of it in my friend's desk going, oh, that's the fear. I could, when he told me I saw that, the fear was here. I could, it was palpable. Because we're hearing this story for the first time. I'm like, he woke up and he goes to school. And we all felt it. Like, oh my God, is this the last time we're going to see this guy? Is he going to be in jail? No, she was 16. And he was like, okay. But what happened? I had to call the school. A lot of girls say, Come, I, I want to call you daddy. But that's probably the worst time that's ever happened in history. <laughs> <laughs> Can you call as daddy? <laughs> Did I tell you, as a friend of mine, he loved bread. He didn't give a fuck. Was this friend a duck? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> we used, and he used to bring in just dry bread and eat it in class. And one day we were sat and our table was in front of us. And he went, You know what? I bet I could eat a slice of bread the size of this table. Go on then. He said, I'll fucking do it. I fucking eat all this bread. And he was well up for it. He was fucking loving the idea of eating all this bread. And we worked out, like, it's like, fat this big. And we went, like, that's about 30, 40, like, that's two loaves of bread. And our science teacher overheard us saying, like, you know, if you eat that, you die, right? I was like, what do you mean I die? He a loaf of bread's this big. You imagine putting that much dough in your stomach. And then the next day, you imagine trying to poop that out. And he just sat and went. And you could tell he's, he's, in his head, he was thinking, a ball of dough that big, my asshole. <laughs> and he just went, you know what? I'm not going to do it. <laughs> we came up with one that was the pterodactyl. It's probably, there's probably a variation of it in every friend group, right? But my friend did this. And for people who don't know, the pterodactyl is where, when you're in the middle of sex, you grab each corner of your duvet and just flap your arms midway through sex and just go, ah! <laughs> We told him about this. He's like, yeah, I'll do that. I'm like, no, you fucking won't. No, I will. And a couple hours later, him and his girlfriend were upstairs. <laughs> we were watching TV downstairs. <laughs> and out of nowhere, we just hear a massive thud and just a... <laughs> we hear his girlfriend <laughs> literally push him off the bed. So you hear the thud of a male body hitting the floor. <laughs> Feet stomping. His girlfriend, you hear his voice like from down the stairs around the corner. What the fuck are you doing? You hear clomping around and then you hear someone stomping down the stairs and the front door slam. <laughs> About a minute after that, Adam comes in wearing like his t-shirt and it's all and he comes down and opens the door and we all just go. <laughs> so we just had the bear clam on Xbox 360. And we oh we because my mate random for some reason I just oh god that's oh, fine. Uh, my mate on Xbox, it's like it's Brad's house. Um, when he, we used to make new accounts with the free month that Xbox Live gave us, and he yeah. made one called a brown bear. <laughs> so what we did is we got everyone to just rename their accounts a something bear, a brown bear, a big bear, a fluffy bear. So people just getting dunked on by the bear clan, and whenever people went on mic, we just growled at it. <laughs> so we just growling down the mic, just looking. Oh man, we used to do so much fucking bullshit on that. The story's not about me, but that by saying that people are going to assume it's about me. So whatever, it's about me, fuck it, if that's what you want to imagine. Also, if you have a nervous disposition, maybe skip this one. God. Right, no mate, I... Well, I, I when your stories have to come with a disclaimer... <laughs> I had to go home early because I was laughing that hard at this story. Right? When I was working at a nightclub a couple of years ago, a lot of years ago now in fact, um, a guy who had worked there told me, like, my housemate like, came in this morning after, like, a one-night stand and he was pale as a sheet. Like, he looked at me, he looked like he'd been mugged originally. And this guy's like, I thought he'd been mugged. He's like, no, he's had a really bad experience. And I'm like, what do you mean, like, with a girl? I'm like, well, fuck work. This is a story that needs to be told. And I pulled up a fucking chair and I sat down, which is probably why I got sent home, to be honest. <laughs> I pulled up a chair and I sat down. Tell me this story. I need to know. So apparently, this guy's housemate, it wasn't me, remember, <laughs> it 
went out and he went to a nightclub, which will not be named, but if people live in Sheffield, they'll know which nightclub he probably met this girl at when I tell the rest of the story. And they like started kissing, they had a few drinks, and they got, went back to her place, and they got down to doing the deed. And before they did, this girl said, excuse me, I just need to get something set up. And she pulled out from under her bed a big roll of plastic sheeting. And she put that on top of her bed. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. Well, this guy, obviously, he's had a few, and he's like, oh, I like this girl, let's see where this goes. So he doesn't think anything of it. So they get down, they're doing the deed, they're having some sex, and what she does is she pulls out a towel from her bedside table. Now, you're probably thinking, where is this going, Carl? Oh, it's going places, Brad. <laughs> right? Well, this girl did. She then tied a knot in the end of this towel and put it up this guy's bum. And again, he was a bit weirded out, but he's in the throes of passion. He's like, okay, it's something a bit weird, but I guess it's okay. And what happened was this girl whispered in his ear, tell me when you're about to finish. And okay, so he's... Oh, like if you've watched, this is the time you skip if you don't want to hear the rest of this story, right? Uh, he said, okay, okay, okay. And as I see, he gets to the end of what is uh, the session, the lovemaking, the pumping, the rumpy pumpy, the porking, as it were. He says, oh, I'm about to finish. So she whips the towel right out of his ass, and he loses complete control of his bowels and shits himself all over the bed. And that girl then proceeds to start rolling around in it. <laughs> This is the moment I lost it. <laughs> and the guy who stood there, looking, and he's just rolling around in his poo. <laughs> and he looks at her, and she's there for a good five minutes, and then she, fin like, she stops. And she slowly just rolls up the plastic sheets in, puts it back in there and gets a shower, and says, Are you coming for a shower? <laughs> and you probably remember from this story, he met the guy in the morning. So he said, Yes! <laughs> And he spent the night. He said he just smelt like poo all night. <laughs> <laughs> and I never thought I'd have a chance to tell that story to an audience. And I'm really happy that I have. Because it's so ridiculous that it has to be true. Because that's not something someone would make up, is it? Especially if it happened to you, you would never tell a story. You'd never would tell you? that story. So you know that happened to his housemate. You know his housemate was kind of sheepishly proud of that it happened, but. <laughs> Oh, if this video is not getting one size, fuck it up. But I'm really sorry, like mum. I know you watch these videos. <laughs> like, it, it wasn't. It wasn't Carl. It definitely, it was, definitely wasn't, me. wasn't Carl. Oh, thing is though, you know me, Brad. If that was me, I would absolutely tell that story. I find that hilarious. You would own it. I would own that shit, literally. In some respect, but yeah. Have you ever told you about the thing one of my mates does whenever he plays Call of Duty online? <laughs> He does, and we turn it into a dance move. It's, it's headshots, tips fedora, leaves server. So we developed an entire dance in nightclubs around this, where you go up to a girl, you 360 no scope, you tip fedora, and you leave server. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole point is, how many girls can you get away with doing that to? So while you're just in the club, it's like, you're dancing, it's just headshot, tits with orally server. <laughs> now that's to invite the people at home. Next time you go out dancing, incorporate that dance move. Does it have to be during an encounter where you feel like you're succeeding? It's got to be, yeah. It's got to be against a girl. You've got to be dancing with a girl. It's going to be headshot, tits with orally, leave server. And you're not allowed to go back. <laughs> Try it, man, it's fucking awesome. Oh, that's nice. Oh, done. Um, hello, welcome to today's news. I'm Tyler Mason. I am the Red Oak Shield Virus. What a name. Today's top stories. Extravagant couple Ryan Ryder and Coffee Soap attempt to travel the world on space hoppers. We are 43 days in already. The new single by the musical duo Tom Hanks and Tom Cruise has just come out, but is that CD bad or is that CD good? <laughs> Tom, Tom Cruise. It's good, wasn't it? Eric Toledo writes to complain to the lottery because they only want 82p. And finally, President of the Planet Gilgamesh, Fiora Lily, has declared that Earth will be invaded within the next three days. I don't know about you, but when that invasion begins, I will be Sloan Rockefellering myself out of here. I think I'll be Andy Ruffle on the floor. Wait, no, that is on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be Andy on the floor laughing on the floor. Don't know about you, but I could go for an Esther Ailman right now. I preferred it when Jay Grid was my co-host. 
What's wrong with me? <laughs> well, you, you're fine, but you're no Aaron Clausen. Or, you're no Carl Smallwood, our sports personality. Pulling double duty today, folks. And I think the first thing that's happened in the sports world we need to talk about is the, like, now record-breaking 14 hat-tricks in one match. Pulled off by one, Sam Bartram for Scunthorpe United, a recent signing for them. Um, uh, recently, you know, you know, acquired from, uh, you know, the far-off regions of Wales. Why don't you pick on Wales? <laughs> uh, by Scunthorpe's new manager, Shibisa Matewer. Shibisa Matewer. Good to see my hometown in the record books for something other than teenage pregnancy rates. And moving away from football into the realm of air hockey, which I know you're all interested in, the new team, Knicks and Caltessa, um, have been competing in the grand finals, which are going to be aired on Sky Sports 15, a new channel you can find on your Sky package if you pay £800 per month. Um, moving away from the air hockey, we now need to talk about, you know, the, the sport of the day, the show jumping. And uh, the horse, Bryna Lawless, as noted, as um, it fell over and it broke its leg, and it unfortunately had to be shot on live TV um, uh, by referee Duke Schnuglis um, uh, from Sweden. Same <laughs> character. Uh, and this has drawn several complaints, most notably from uh, the head of PETA, Matt Gilbert, who says maybe Swedish people shouldn't be shooting horses on live TV, to which Duke Schnuglis responded, I'm a shooter horse. I'll see you back in the office. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'll definitely be watching that game tonight with Bubba P and G. <laughs> you stole my last name. Wait, no, that, that makes me sound like a surname. I meant she's, I was meant to have the last one on the list, which was G, and she nicked it. All right. So that's it. That's the list yeah, over. Well. That's all we get. So, uh, yeah, thanks, patrons. You can say thank you to Nisha you in the really comments like... for stealing my last word. It's not really a word, is it? It's a letter. Uh, shut up. <laughs> if you wanna if you wanna have your name read out in a in a comedic comedic way. Oh god, yeah. Yeah. Join join the Patreon. Please. 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 <laughs> Please. It's we need so to warm. afford air conditioning. <laughs> it's so warm. Uh, oh, I've got a breeze on my legs now, it's nice. I have not felt anything. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> no, I just I'm just numb inside. <laughs>